the primary problem with psychology today is that today's psychologist is completely indoctrinated by yesterday's psychologist. You see, it's very, very rare that people come into this world that have the creative capacity to conceptualize the entire architecture of the human mind. And so people today that study psychology do not have even enough consciousness to become somebody that can author those same ideas. And so when you conceptually learn the mind merely as a definition or terminology based <coughs> process of memorizing, <coughs> there is no experiential basis for any assertions that you make. And so you have no real idea what you're doing. You know? So today's psychologist is somebody that has not only no mastery of their own mind, is actually completely sequestered a, you know, a volume of non-experiential, useless information in their mind that they can only recall and parrot and paraphrase at a very, very poor percentage. I mean, when Americans are trained to think that their intelligence is their ability to recall someone else's ideas on a percentage basis and get a GPA, and then they form an identity for this ego space of subjective, nonsensical, reactionary behavior, <clears throat> and then they entitle themselves to this identity and defend it like a militarized soldier protecting their yellow brick road to their illusory future, whether that's heaven or your perfect soulmate nonsense, it's all going to collapse on everyone. Well, you see, that's not the way it works, that we've gotten away from a Socratic environment. We don't have wisdom in our society at all. Wisdom in the United States is outlawed. Wisdom is, you know, shot. You know, wisdom is nailed to a cross. Wisdom is shamed. You know, we have developed America into one giant reactionary immune system to prevent consciousness. In fact, it's entirely an evil institution where you have a book that pertains to the human mind, and the entire book of the DSM-5 is only defining that something's wrong and condemning people to lifelong affliction, and Americans like that. Americans want to gobble pills and and have somebody tell them that there's something wrong because they're the most irresponsible, childlike, fear-based cowards in the, in the history of mankind. There isn't a worse group of human beings than Americans as it pertains to any objective compassion for anyone else. Like human beings here can simply hear the name of a country in front of someone else and be totally okay with pulling dead bodies out of the rubble and no compassion for anyone. That all you got to do is, you know, put them into groups and, uh, and sit them in front of a TV and you have total control of an American. An American, you know, doesn't even know how to differentiate between, you know, thinking and parroting and paraphrasing in groups and they just reaffirm their entire dogmas. You see, people think dogma is only pertaining to religion, but in America, dogma is the only way in which they experience a world outside, the only way. That the entire education system in the United States is to cause human beings to have no capacity to ideate independently of outside information. That's why Americans need a government and certifications to tell them who to listen to because they do not have the intellectual capacity to even listen to thoughts and ideas without having a judgment, a reaction, a defense mechanism, and confusion where they're looking for someone, an adult, to tell them that this person's right or wrong. <laughs> Americans cannot understand how ideas form, and so they think that the only way to learn is books, because they were indoctrinated through fear and through shame to sit in line, and, you know, that they were smart if they could regurgitate someone else's ideas in a pattern of validation and differentiation where they actually believe that their level of anxiety that creates the confusion has something to do with intelligence at all. And so we don't care whether you live your life confused, thinking you're stupid and you're not, or if you know you get good grades and you go on to be able to buy shit and just continue. <clears throat> you know, the American dream was the 
a carrot that was created by yesterday's psychologist as a effort that collusion between corporate America and the government using Freudian psychology as the backbone and the work of Edward Bernays with his works in say public relations you know propaganda and the engineering of consent well engineering of consent was a new methodological approach to indoctrinating people in societies where Sigmund Freud you know told them look you cannot have a democracy that these people are dangerous there's dark libidinal forces and primitive drives in human beings that required them to be subordinated and subdued and so you need to not allow these people to vote what you need to do is they need you they need to be indoctrinated psychologically and here's how we do it on a subconscious level and so america designed modern consumerism not to free americans and give them the right to pursue their dreams but to actually give them the dreams and give them the illusion of happiness through consumption and they even had to engineer new ways to manufacture called planned obsolescence where corporate greed would enable them to reduce the quality of goods and services and slowly release technologies as to induce human beings to buy more and more and more and more and more you see wall street lehman brothers knew that we needed to transform the united states from a needs based economy to one of unlimited wants and desires and so they turned to the work of Edward Bernays who opened the first company the Council of Public Relations in New York taking his uncle Freud's uh, work in psychoanalysis he worked with psychoanalysis in order to start to create the propaganda that became the backbone of American civilization when he demonstrated to the tobacco industry that he could have one psychoanalysis give him information about women by understanding their subconscious they created the first propaganda campaign used to indoctrinate people as an example and that is the beginning he demonstrated that he alone through one public relations event where he staged these women suffragettes at a very specific signal he tipped off you know the news media around the world by calling it and giving a tip where to be at what time because these women the suffragettes were going to protest against male patriarchy and oppression and he said he didn't know what they meant by it but torches of freedom and so that's what the headlines were torches of freedom and so he paid these women simply to pull a cigarette out they didn't know why and light it up and put it in the air the statue of liberty and so the cigarette was a gesture and it was something that became symbolic of females uh you know fight against the oppression of the male and he did it overnight he helped the tobacco industry have women smoke he invented product placement celebrity endorsements he created seminars to train and indoctrinate women for the first time to seek male sexual validation in public spaces which was never anything that females ever thought of and it was a very awkward experience for early women to be showing skin and then having men become predators and look at them they didn't know how to react to it because it was never something they ever considered men did not know how to look at women like that either and so they started to accelerate these sexual urges as a means to cause people to buy things they didn't need seeing the success of Edward Bernays's early experiments in indoctrinating people Wall Street created the department store Edward Bernays even created the idea of funneling Americans money to Wall Street by promoting investment by average Americans and now there we were the dreams of corporate America and, and America were being fulfilled you know the the press you know they were being used by Edward Bernays but when they caught on to all the money that was being made by forcing people to buy things they didn't want that's when they said well the freedom of the press and they turned their back on America and it became an instrument of propaganda that is persisting today where the objectivity of the freedom of the press our internet to hold our government accountable has become the basis of a profound indoctrination that has devastated our collective consciousness and reducing it to near prehistoric levels through constant fear that inhibits our conscious awareness of the world around us and so the modern consumer 
Well, it's a side effect of the misinterpretation Freud had about what caused the irrational behaviors that gave him such fear. We need freedom, is what we 